What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. I gotta admit, I'm feeling pretty refreshed. I just got back from Hawaii. I spent a week there visiting some friends. It was really spontaneous. And I gotta say, if you're considering a trip or you've been considering something and wanna get away, but you've been pushing it off, just go. We're working too hard, you guys, especially after this last year, we all need a break. Recommend going somewhere, even if it's just a little weekend getaway locally. Everyone deserves it, so you know what? Get away. I went to Hawaii, it was amazing, and I went to the Kualoa Ranch in Oahu, and as you can see, I've got this new, ha, little piece of decoration behind me. This is the East Dock sign, as you might recognize it from Jurassic Park, one of my favorite movies. But this is a, a little, little nod to the Dennis Nedry, you know, car scene where he hits the arrow to the East Dock. I'll just put it back behind me. There it is, great. So I thought I'd do a little Jurassic Park inspired website this week because I'm in a little Jurassic Park mood after going to the filming location in Kualoa Ranch in Oahu. It's a gorgeous place. Here's me there, by the way. <laughs> Running from a dinosaur. It was awesome. It's such a gorgeous place. And they've got some of the sets there from Jurassic Park, Jurassic World. They've got the log. It's really cool. If you ever get over there, I definitely recommend checking it out. So today I'm just gonna build a little Jurassic Park theme site with a focus on a form element. It's a great way for people to contact you and withhold information and data so you'll get notified when someone reaches out to you. Here we have a, just a basic page. When you load it, we've got a nice little fade in, we've got some leaves, some crustaceous Jurassic period leaves. And we've just got a little, how are we doing form because you know, things aren't always going well in Jurassic Park. It's supposed to be a family-friendly place, but not everything goes right all the time. You may remember certain things going wrong like this. Or maybe like this. Mr. Hammond, I think we're back in business. And there was that time this happened. So I thought it'd be fun to just do a little, you know, complaint, check-in form from Jurassic Park themselves. So here's just a basic little form element. It's got the name field, email, subject, a message, a submit button, and I'll show you how we can build this out in Webflow and link up all the data elements so that you'll get a email yourself when somebody fills this out. So if you wanna learn some basic form elements in Webflow, stick around, we'll jump right in. So this is our finished site here. We've got our just simple page, we've got the fade in, we've got the form that appears, and none of these are clickable. This is just one solid form, one page. And this is our name field here, and email address. And each of these are tied to the, the thing that it represents, right? So this is the name field. When you click on it on your computer, when you click, it'll kind of pop up all the saved versions of your name that you've entered in other various forms throughout your time on your certain uh, computer and email address is the same thing and we'll recognize that it's not just an empty form field it is specifically an email field specifically a name field so it will recognize things and these aren't just basic kind of input boxes they are actually holding data that will send to an email so you can't just kind of create div elements and do whatever you want put some text on there you'd have to add some javascript behind the scenes but webflow makes it easy so let's take a look at that so here we go this is my basic page here first step i'm just going to add a section and I already have some styles saved behind the scenes here, so I'll just name this form section. And then inside this form section, I'm going to put a container. And this will just allow our form element to uh, maintain its boundaries in the middle there, give some equal margin on either side, so it never grows too huge for the viewer to see. And this container, we're gonna name it just container. And the height will be 100%, and it'll take up the width of whatever we put inside it. And what were we gonna put inside it? A form element, that is the point of the video, yes. So when we scroll down, we just click form block, and boom, it appears right inside there. So this is our form block. It already gives us two fields, a name and an email address. We obviously want a little more than this, right? 
So first thing I'm gonna do in our form block is add a new div. So make sure we're in our form block uh, right here. I'm gonna add a new div just to hold some more content. I'm gonna make this our form heading div. There we go. This will live above all of the other uh, field labels and elements. Inside of here, I'm gonna put a uh, h1. So we've got h1 here. And if I just give this a class of form heading, there we go, you'll see it absorbs a nice Jurassic Park font. So I uploaded that myself. I just downloaded it from the internet. And then when you go to your project settings, you can just go to fonts and it says upload custom fonts. So that's what I did. I had a little TIFF or TTF file. And then when you upload that, when you go to your designer, it, it'll be an option within your font dropdown. So now I have access to that, which makes it great. So then I'll just write here, how are we doing? You're not doing so hot, Jurassic Park. People are dying in your park. <laughs> so first we got that H1 and then our form heading uh, div, I'm gonna add an H2, just a little subsection right beneath it here. So heading, and this will be an H2. And then I'll put, if you have any concerns about your time in the park, we'd love to hear from you. And I assume a lot of people will be reaching out because <sighs> this park is not that safe. I'm just gonna give this a class of sub uh, heading. There we go, got some red styling, a little italicis there. And now our form, let's just dive right into this here. So if we look at the breakdown here, we've got the form block and that's going to absorb the height of whatever parent it's in, right? So right now it's in the container and the container is 100% of the section's height. So if I were to change the container height, the form will adjust and scale with its parent. And then we've got the form block, which holds all the data. First thing we put in there was a heading div. That was custom. We added that on top just to give it a nice heading. And now we got a field label. So field labels and then text fields are kind of the elements that we'll work with most. You'll see a uh, field label here is the name and then you got email address is the next one and they each are accompanied with their own text field. And the text fields, if you go into settings, you'll see they have a name, placeholder, We'll get to that in a second, but each one has its own. So I'm actually just gonna copy one of these and then copy a text field. There we go here. So now first thing, name is good. We're gonna give this a class of field label. That way it absorbs the Jurassic Park font again. I have some pre-save styling here. There we go, that just added a little bit of margin beneath all of them. So I had copied and pasted that input element, but I'm gonna actually delete this and instead of the input element, I am going to put a text area. So right down here in our elements, I can click text area. Perfect, and it put it at the top, but I can just move that down. And I'll just put it right under message, but above the button, there we go. And the reason for doing this is, you'll see here, when I click on these, they all have that in the text area. This keeps the text in the top left corner. So when I start writing, the text automatically goes to the top left corner. So if I just show you what the, the base one was, that was what was originally there. And let's just say I changed the height to uh, 300 pixels to make it more like a message field with some breathing room. You'll see how the text sits in the center, which, and when I preview this, when a user goes to type, it lives in the middle, which isn't ideal, right? So if you ever run into this issue, sometimes the form does this by default, just switch it over to a text field and then it'll pop up to the top left corner. And then you can still adjust the height without the text flying to the center. So here, when I give the text area a, uh, a class of text area, it just has a minimum height of 150 pixels and it kind of expands and grows a little bit. That makes a little more sense when a user writes a long message in the form. Last thing here is our submit button. I'll just give this a class of uh, submit button and it absorbs some styling, got the nice font. It kind of has some letter spacing on hover and grows, perfect. And again, you can create all of this with just div blocks and headings and text, but it's not absorbing any of the data. So it's kind of just sitting there and looks nice. It might look like a form, but it's not acting like a form. So the best thing to use is the Webflow form element. You can change it and customize it however you want to look very cool, but the basic elements behind the scenes, you gotta use the form element, because then it's absorbing what you need. So for example, if I go to the settings here, 
of our inputs or our text fields. So it has an ID of name and it's got a name of name. I'll show you what that means in a second. Placeholder, you could put something like, please enter your name and then you'll see how it is a faded gray and then when the user actually clicks on it, it will be replaced by whatever they type. But we don't need that placeholder. I think it's pretty clear that it actually says name. You can make it require, which I will. And that way the user can't submit the form until that field is filled out. So you've seen that before. Sometimes if you forget to enter your email, it'll bounce you back and in red it'll say, please enter your email. If you check required, that'll be the case. If you check autofocus, when the page loads, that field will be autofocus. So you see here, it already prompts the user in the name field. I don't think we need any autofocuses. I think it's pretty clear that we want them to fill out the form, but I can go ahead and make all of these required at least. And when we go to our settings for each of these fields, I'll just make sure this is name, nice and clear. And right here, subject, I will change this. See, when I copied and pasted it, it was taking email and it was adding a number after each one. So email and then two, three, it was building upon that. So I'm just cleaning that up right now. So in our name, I'll just make sure they all match the IDs and the name, subject, and then message. So this was a text area, so it's a little different. So I can make this, I'll change the ID and the name to message message there we go i'll make this required make sure all of them are required great so i'll show you what these mean right now so here's an example this is a form from my personal website that i have my portfolio site so when somebody submits something in my form element on my contact page this is what i'll get as an email and the form is called cullen's contact form i'll show you how to name that in a second it shows you where the site came from and the name field which is like the the field element that we just showed and then that's where they put Email, it'll show your name, subject, message. So when we look at our breakdown here, and all of these, all these places that we're putting name, so that's the name is name, and that's this name field, email, subject, message. So make sure all of these match up to whatever you want them to be. And that's what you'll see when somebody fills out your form. If we go to our project settings, we'll see here under forms, from name, so I had uh, it's from the Cullen's contact form. You can name it whatever you like. So I could change the name here to Jurassic Park uh, feedback form. So whenever someone submits something, that'll be the title of it. Send form submissions to, and this is where the emails will go to. So if you're building a site for a client, you'll put your client's email here. So that way when someone contacts them for their service, they'll get the inquiry and then subject line, you can create one yourself. A reply to email address. You can actually use a variable, which is pretty unique. So Webflow allows you to just copy this here. It's variable placeholders here that will absorb the name and the email that the user used in the form when they filled it out. So that way, so this is the email I got from my own website. If I were to hit reply, you'll see here, it replies automatically to Cullen at that email because that's what was filled out in the form. Email template, again, you can customize this with HTML itself if you know how, but if you don't do anything, this is what it looks like. So that's still a reasonable option just to leave it how it is. And you can just make sure your form field elements are filled out directly how you want them. And you can just respond, start a dialogue, and then get your conversation going from there and get those freelance clients and then start a great rapport, hopefully make some money. So another thing we can do is alter the state of the form. So here we are on our form block. If we go to the settings, we'll see we are in a normal state right now. And this is also where we can change the form name. So right now it just says email form. But if I just change this to Jurassic Park feedback form, there we go. And this is the normal state. So this is what people see. But when they click, if you click success right here, this is what people see after they click submit and everything goes through smoothly. So thank you, your submission has been received. You can customize this. I can give this maybe a green background because that shows you that it's kind of a success message. I can change the font here. And you can make this really anything you'd like to make it seem more like a success message that you'd like. You can customize it, add background images, other colors, whatever you'd like. Change the height of this. So maybe this is too small, so I want this to be 500 pixels. The height of this to 500, and then affect the container. I can make the container flex vertical, center that message so it's a little bit more on the center of the screen. Go back to the form block, go to different settings. So we did the normal state, we did the success state. And now if we go to the error state, you'll see down here, We've got a little error message, and this will be if something goes wrong, it can't submit, or maybe they forget to fill something out. Make the background color a little more uh, ominous, this bright red, 
and I can make the font the same thing. So our normal state is this. When there's a success message, this happens. If there's an error, we'll see that red at the bottom there. So there's really ways to play around with it, make it unique. You can add images as background, add some div elements and background images, colors, whatever you'd like. So that way you can give the user a more intimate experience when they submit on your form. And then that's forms, basically. So we've set up our form, we have our field label, and we have our text field here. And behind the scenes, each field has their own setting. Just make sure the names are corresponding to what you want them to be. And you can hit required or autofocus. So each one absorbs different data and sends it to the user upon the submission of the form. But this is really fun. Go to Hawaii if you can. Go to Kualoa Ranch. Go to Kualoa Ranch. Kualoa Ranch. Go to Kualoa Ranch, Kulawa Kulo. Go to Hawaii if you can. Go to Kualoa Ranch. Visit the Jurassic Park sites and the sets where they filmed everything. It's beautiful. Take some time for yourself because we all need it. So this was a little tutorial on form elements in Webflow. Hope you found it helpful. If so, get out there, go create something, build your own version of this. You're gonna need it. So give me a like and subscribe if you found some value in this. And remember that um, uh, life, um, uh, finds a way.